This video is going to be about how to take decisions in bonsai. Creating bonsai involves a lengthy process, it's partly artistic, but basically it's creative. And any creative activity requires a slightly scientific approach in that you have to think in a logical manner. And that's how you approach science. Although I wasn't a great engineer or scientist, I did get an offer to be a lecturer at one point. I'm not sure whether that was uh, the right decision to take. So I never became an engineering lecturer, but I can teach bonsai quite well. And over the years, because most of my bonsai has been really from learning it myself, I've been able to analyze the creative process in bonsai. So look at this great big field of mine. This is what I call the jungle. And many people, when they come to the nursery, they wonder what the hell is going on. You know, all these trees are like wild trees, but there is a plan and logic behind everything. I know exactly what I'm doing. So if you look at all these privet stumps, you may think that they're just privet stumps, but I have a plan in mind for all of them. So there is always a plan that you should aim for. So if you look at them, they may seem, you know, absolutely impossible trees, but behind all that, there is a logical sequence of events which will create the bonsai eventually. Now, I know there are, there are hundreds and hundreds of trees, so where do I start? Let's start with something simple. Now, in this field, I've got quite a lot of European beech. You look at it, all the beech here. Many of them have been grown when they were no thicker than a pencil, and they've been grown here for the last 15 or 20 years till they become thick like this. Look at it, I've got about 20 of them here. They're massive trees. All of them, they've been grown in the ground successfully, taken out, and then, you see, you can see the progress of these trees. So, not all of them will end up that big, but they will eventually become bonsai. Some of them are dug up and put into pots. And let me show you how I'm going to deal with one which has been taken out of the ground and put in a pot for the last two years. And I'm going to refine it. I'm going to start with something simple. We we'll start with something simple and then progress to slightly more difficult things. So here we are. You can see the shape of this tree. It's got a lovely trunk and the crown is too big. So what do we do? How do I think? The bonsai will eventually become this big. This sort of size is quite acceptable. When you think when we went to Taiwan, we saw trees 8, 10 feet high and they're still credible bonsai. So this is not really large by Taiwanese standards. So the way I think about this tree is that I'm going to create a nice dome shape or conical shape and everything outside the area will be cut off. So let me get my tools. Here we are, we have this great big European beach. The first thing I think when I look at this is which is going to be the front and of course which will be the back. So let's walk around. And the back usually is dictated by the density of the foliage at the back to offset the front, the front should be open. But also the radial roots that go into the ground also determine the front. Now these are all sorts of wild plants that have grown. I think that's a wild rose that doesn't belong to this tree, but the base is there. This is quite nice. If I were to look at this tree, there are many options. As I say, in life, you're always faced with choices and the choices are sometimes quite bewildering. If I didn't want to make such a big tree, I could make the tree this high. I could make it this high and keep the tree that short. And this is a very credible leader here. But if I want to use the whole height of the tree, okay, before I move away, if I made this the, the height of the tree, I could this, get another tree from here, beach earlier very easily, so I can get two trees. So I have to think ahead that means I've got to spend another two or three years to get the air layering from that. But if I wanted to do it instantly, don't have the patience to wait two or three years, I can cut it off and make a short tree. 
But because I like big trees, I'm going to use the whole height of the tree. And because I'm using the whole height of the tree, this seems a very logical front. See, they've got a potential leader leading towards you. So that is the shape. So what I always do is create a basic shape, not thinking of the structure at this stage. See, all this growth is one year's growth. The beauty of plants is that they continue to grow and they grow sometimes very fast. So although we say bonsai is a patient game, there is a side to bonsai that is not so daunting because plants grow and it's not really that long to wait. And also the other thing is that because they grow, should you make a mistake, that's not the end of story. It will grow again and your mistakes can be corrected. So there's a lot to be said for the way plants grow, their pluses and minuses. So I'm just going on pruning the basic triangular shape. Okay, we'll look from that side and have a look to see. So I'm aiming to create that sort of dome shape. Looking at some of the young shoots, I've just realized that some of the young shoots are two foot long. Hmm. One year's growth. So they're growing all over the place, crisscrossing. So you can see just with literally a minute's work what I've managed to achieve. I've created that dome shape and I think a lot of people would give their right arm for this tree like that if it's put in a bonsai training pot but there's still a lot of refinement to do for instance some of these branches going up you don't really want it to go there so you want it to go out radially so I cut that one off so I'm looking at it critically to see where there are crossing branches that's a crossing branch there there's a crossing branch there and let me just get these upward growing branches. I want to grow them outwards rather than upwards. And now I'm going to look more critically to see where the leader of the tree should be. You see this could make a leader, that could make a leader. I could even make the tree lean slightly like that, I don't know where, just a very slight lean. That is coming back on itself, which is not good. You see that thick branch there. I don't know, let me do it gradually. See that branch going up that's not really good like here so I really should deal with that and that's going back on itself so all the crisscrossing inward growing branches I'm trying to take out and again if you come to the back there's one branch which is going up like that which it shouldn't really do so let's get rid of that. So you see, I'm logically creating a nice structure in the tree. And see how much I've pruned. If you look on the ground, you see I've pruned quite a bit. And then I'm going to later on, I'm going to wait another month or so. I will put it in a large plastic bonsai training pot and then I'm going to start keeping closer control because while these trees are growing in the field I come and can't come out every day to keep pruning every twig so once it goes back in the nursery 
I will then be able to keep a closer eye on it and create a more detailed ramification. So you can see, this is a very simple instance. It's not complicated, so I've dealt with this one. Now let's look at a slightly more difficult this one. This is beech tree number two. As you can see, it's about eight foot tall. And again, it's about 20 years grown in the ground successively and then put in a pot. So this was put in a pot maybe about two years ago and then allowed to grow and the roots went into the soil. So hence the growth. All this growth, I would say, is in the last three years. So three years, you can get like four, five, six foot growth. So it is much, much too tall. So we don't want a tree that big. That is the first decision. Do I want a tree eight foot tall? No. I want a bonsai about this size. So it's grown all that time. So you must be asking me, why did I let it grow that thick well, and so tall? Sometimes you have to be a bit patient and by letting it grow tall, it helps to thicken the trunk, it helps to create the branches. So, there you are. It's become quite big and it's got the semblance of like a twin trunk tree. Again, decision, first decision, front or the back. This is more open, so this is an obvious front. This could also be a front, should you want to. Don't forget, everything is possible, you know, nothing is impossible. So this is also possible, but I think, yeah, this is also possible. There's so many possibilities. And let's look at each of the possibilities in turn. Okay, there are some obvious areas, like this crossing branch. Let me take this out straight away. Okay, then the height of the tree, we don't want the tree that far. So I'm going to eliminate at least three or four foot of the tree. So I may use my mini chainsaw or just a lopper. Let's see where we go. Okay, I don't need the tree that tall, so. Look at that, that's at least five foot of growth there. So reducing the height of the tree was the first decision and that wasn't too difficult a decision to make. Okay, let's get rid of some more. These mini chainsaws are an absolute godsend. So you can see these decisions weren't too difficult to make. Now the next thing to do, as I showed you before, is to create a rough dome shape or triangular shape because once you get that dome shape or triangular shape it's beginning to look more like a bonsai don't think too much of the structure at this stage just create the overall shape and then you will begin to see what we call the wood from the tree This sort of material is almost like material that some people manage to go collecting and find. But as you know, I'm not a great believer in collecting trees. I prefer to grow my own trees in my own land. And I don't have the ethical problem of collecting. Although if you collect from other people's private land, that's quite okay. But as a rule, I don't believe in collecting from the wild. Because in most instances, people collect illegally, without permission. Looks like a big windswept heater. So, how, how long was that? Barely one or two minutes. And, as Josh said, it looks like a windswept going that way. Now, the twin trunk tree here, uh, this branch here, makes it look very credible as a windswept. And if I use this as the front, uh, I don't want too many of these thick branches going there. I think I sh can... If I'm making a cut here. I want to preserve that twin trunk. I would want to point out at one stage 
or certainly know that because there were too many branches growing here, this is what we call inverse taper. You see, this part has become thicker than that. But because beach area very easy, if I plant it low, I will get roots and I can correct the problem here. You know, so this could be a potential problem because of the inverse taper. But that's not a problem to worry too much about. Just by planting it deeper, I can correct it. Now the other decision is, is how far do I go? I could make this the leader. You see, this has got a very nice twist there. That would be very nice. I can then cut that off and that would be very nice. If I look at the other side, let's look at the other side and see what possibilities there are for making this the front of the tree. As I said, if you look at it from this side, this is also very curly. You can just make this a very nice curly tree with this the leader and cut that off. But then you won't have the benefit of the twin trunk on the other side. Mm. So you see there's another conflicting or difficult decision for you to make. So this is where you've got to decide what do you do. Difficult one. I like the twin trunk, you know, because yeah. it's unusual. Yeah. Every tree goes straight up, so there's no real joy or beauty in that. So I will now train the tree, keep it like this. I will leave making further decisions because because this very curly bit here could make an interesting part for using that the leader. Yeah. If I make this the leader, it may not be so interesting. So I may get rid of this at a later stage. So I've got a choice of this and this as the leader for the future. In which case, I probably don't need that one. So I can get rid of that one now. So that's another major decision I've taken. So certain decisions you can defer, but we've taken certainly the main decision to create a credible bonsai. So as I said, I'm going to now leave the tree at this stage like this, and then we will plant it in a large bonsai training pot and create the bonsai from that. So this is tree number two. So, as you can see, we've got so many interesting beech trees here that we can work on. Look at this one. Look at this. It's grown in the pot. Look at that. That was the root going out of the, out of the pot and into the ground. <laughs> and that's why they've grown so vigorously. And let's turn this up. Another interesting tree. Look at the root base there. That's an interesting one. So let's tackle this because this is quite a difficult one. Okay. So this is beech tree project number three. And again, what do I think of this tree? I showed you how the root went in and hence it's become like almost eight foot tall. And all these top four feet have grown in the last two years. So they certainly grow fast and the trunk has thickened. The root is quite interesting, but it's become rather one-sided because it may have been too close to the other trees. So I'm not sure what we do. This is more complicated than any of the other ones. Let's look at it from every side. So let's walk around and see what the possibilities are. And again, Sometimes, because I'm very uh, cautious and uh, stingy with my trees, I always think of air laying. So if you wanted to air lay, you could air lay this, and you could get a tree with a lot of ramification. A lot, a lot of ramification. Just that part alone. So that's one possibility. That's one possibility. But as I say, I've got so many trees. What's the point of air layering? I've got to that stage now where I'm not thinking very much about um, creating constant new trees by air laying. There comes a point where I need to stop. So I'm going to chop the tree down a bit. I don't want it that tall. So let me see what goes through your mind. As I'm looking at the tree, I want you to think as well. What is a possible leader? 
and possible leader you must be saying to yourself is this one okay this is a possible leader and I can cut the rest of the tree off there but knowing me I'm thinking radically I make also make this the leader I tell you why if you go a little further back I can cut the tree at the slant like that and the leader could go like that so it becomes a slanting tree so we're not going to talk about air layering so if I make this the leader I'm going to cut that off so let's see what happens when I cut that off so come the chainsaw let's get it out and we will cut this off so we have timber so there you go you can see the light and we don't want the tree that tall so let's bring it down to shape So remember what I said, I'm going to make like a leaning style tree, slightly leaning to that side. By the way, I did mention in some earlier videos, why is it that beech trees in the autumn, they don't lose all the leaves. The leaves stay on the tree till the early spring. and. In the UK, the beech trees get the new leaves around the third week in April and their leaves stay on the tree till April. I was told by someone that in the process of evolution, these trees learned to keep the leaves on because they didn't want the deer nibbling the shoots. Grazing animals can nibble the shoots. So they've learned to evolve in such a way that they keep the leaves on and that prevents the uh, grazing animals from nibbling the shoots so i've got that far i don't want the tree that tall so let's get rid of another so this long shoot what do i do with this i don't really need that so that's an easy decision to make so as you can see if you look at the whole process of creation logically it's not so daunting and not so difficult so i'm aiming to make like a leaning tree leaning that way slightly leaning like that so I can still get to compensate for the ones one-sided look I can let the tree go in that direction I can see another little fault here this branch is going upward so that's an easy decision to make I don't need that so I cut this one off. so I want to have the branches growing more or less horizontally like so so I've got the tree going that way and this tree branch coming back like this. I could easily have made this the leader or make this the leader. So maybe sometimes you've got to be a bit patient and then see how the tree evolves and then take it from there. But if you wanted to, I can see the attraction of keeping this the leader. I can still decide to cut the or from there that's also a possibility in fact that may be a better option because I'm controlled by the way the roots go in and that determines the front of the tree but as I said you can always plant it low and get new roots and thereby change the front also I'm a bit worried that this is too much of a lump there and I may not get a good taper from the tree so I might have to consider cutting that off so you can see how many decisions if I want to keep this the leader I should really cut this off So I'm thinking aloud here. Or if I make this the leader, I can cut this off. 
I can cut this off and let that go in that direction because I can't have two conflicting leaders. So you see the dilemma I'm placed in. So as I always say to myself, I've got to bite the bullet at some stage. So I rather like the idea of the tree leaning that way. So I will aim to create the tree in that direction. I hope it is the right decision. Somehow I don't like the idea of the leader coming back like that. Let me cut this off and show you what I mean. See, this doesn't make such a good leader. See, so if I cut this off, I get that. But then this lump, I know I can get ramification there. I may have to cut all that off and then let the tree grow, grow further. I think I'll have to do that. But when I went into to Taiwan, I learned something very useful. They don't always cut straight back to the point where you want it to callus. If you leave a little stub, the wood will rot naturally back into there. So I'm not going to do a flush cut. Okay. Let me... I will leave a little stub so that it goes back there. And then when it rots, I can just knock it off. So there you are. I've reduced the height of this tree by half. And that is the direction, future direction and design of the tree. Slightly leaning in that direction with that as the new leader. And that nice load bar. So I've compensated for the one-sided look by making it lean. I can take that branch there and create new branches. But knowing these beech trees, they produce branches so easily that I'm not worried. Mm -hmm. So we have created that three is. trees. As I said, if I wanted to layer earlier and had the patience, that would make a beautiful tree. But I don't want to wait another two or three years. So I'm just going to get rid of that. Now let's look at some other big trees. Let's go there and show you some more challenging projects. If we walk through the jungle here, look at it. The more I walk around, the more I see. <laughs> that is ever so interesting too. So. Let's not do another beach. We've got too many beach. Uh, this was also a beach is growing, but for some reason, this one has lost a lot of these. But the ramification on this is beautiful. Okay, let's look at some of these field maples. Now this is, as you know, a field maple. We've got quite a lot of field maples. Uh, if we walk around, I'll show you what the other field maples look like. These are all field maples. So these were grown in the ground and we did lift them up and we planted them in the ground so that they become thicker and produce new branches. But you can see I've already taken some drastic decisions, taking some of those very major branches off. And you see how vigorous they are. Even the two branches are fused together. If you come close, you see that branch is fused with that branch. How interesting is that? Uh, so I'm, I will find that a very interesting one because I may have to decide whether to keep one trunk or two trunk. But I don't have a large enough chain so I may leave this for another day but it's got a massive trunk. Look at all these. All these trees have got massive trunks. So while they are going here, we've got to decide what the future direction is. So again, some of these other trees, you can see there's a horse on there. And for a person who doesn't know much about bonsai, they must be wondering what the hell you're doing here. You know, a trunk and then a new leader. So this is how we develop them. So all these trees are in different stages of being developed like this one. Have a look at this one. This is so interesting. You see the wood has rotted here. 
the wood has rotted away and this is just letting trees grow naturally and with the passage of time they develop in all sorts of strange ways so this is going to be ever such an interesting tree Look at that, that was nature doing its work hmm? and although it's got no definite taper, these exposed roots, I could shove a rock in there and that would make a very interesting plant. Uh, some of these upward going branches. The beauty of deciduous trees is that they produce branches very easily. So don't worry about that. Oh, the sun has started to come out. And again, if you bring the camera here, you see how vigorous these trees are. They fuse together. Two branches, this branch and that branch has fused together. tend to have that habit. So I've got to now decide what to do with this tree. It's quite interesting, but uh, it's tending to get a lot of inverse paper. Probably too tall. See, I've decided to make that the leader. And then these little twigs. I don't need, so that's going to be the future shape and direction of the tree. So that wasn't too difficult. That wasn't too difficult. But every tree is different. So let's get back to one of those thick trunk ones because they are certainly very challenging and very interesting. I have one which is really challenging. And it's this one here. This monster, look at it. The pot is about three foot in diameter, so it's a huge tree. Now, the big decision I have here is to decide which is the front. This side or the other side? I've got this on the top. As I say, they produce branches so easily, I'm not worried about that in the least. Okay, if you look at the tree, it's got a beautiful spread there. And all these little suckers going up here, it could have made a twin trunk, but I probably don't need it. It's only confusing me. So what I'm looking for is the spread of the tree and what is more important, what is going to be the leader of the tree. This tree is very difficult because I've got one, two, three, four possible leaders. So which do I take? Let's look at the tree from the other side as well. I'm going to cut all the branches off because I know they produce branches so easily. I'm not worried.
Look at it. It's an absolute monster of a tree. Look at the base from this side. Absolutely beautiful. So this is a possible fight. So is the other side. Both are possible fight. So this is very impressive as well. So it's quite a difficult decision to make because there are two choices. I think this is as nice. This is probably a better side. I can use a short leader. Yeah. So, but again, I keep reminding you that you get inverse taper if you let too many branches go from one point. So this is what is happening here. So whether to make the tree go back that way or to continue going it that way. I know that this is almost dead, so I don't need this one. So that was an easy decision because that died. I don't need these thick branches because I want to grow new branches. So it's really finding the trunk line. Look at that powerful base there. Really powerful. So I'm more or less inclined to use this side as the front. So if I use this side as the front, what is going to be the leader? I've got to ask myself, is this a possible leader or is that the possible leader? I made a major cut here, so it's making a nice callus. Now, I've got four possible leaders. So method of elimination, I ask myself, is this a good thing? Not really, isn't it? So I think straight away I can see that's not going to be a leader. So let's get rid of that one. So I got rid of that one. Method of elimination, I got rid of another problem. So the more I eliminate, the easier the task will be. So I'm now left with a choice of two, not two, three. I keep returning to this side, but this side, the, the base is not so interesting. And because the base is not so interesting, again, if you look at it, the base, this side, is not as interesting as the other side. Certainly not. So we will concentrate on the other side. Also, this part is not very interesting. So let's go back that side. So this is what you have to keep doing. You've got to keep assessing and seeing which is the best side. So again, I could make it a broom. That's a lazy man's uh, way of looking at the problem. I think if you use this as the front, the one at the back seems to be not really appropriate. Although if you want some movement, if I wanted some movement, I want the tree to go this way and possibly go back this way. That is possible. Come here and then go back this way. So I could keep this as the leader. Keeping this as the leader is okay, but it's too straight like that. Yeah. So you see the problems I have. I've got quite a lot of problems, but I really need to, as they say, bite the bullet at some point. So, I think this is not a very good leader. What do you think, Josh? <laughs> I like it, then it'd be hard to use it. Yeah. But the base is the beautiful part. Yeah, yeah. The base is the beautiful part. We left. could do the uh, 
easy man solution by throwing it like a drum machine. That means let a lot of branches grow from these shoots and make a nice head with it. So this will carry the superstructure for the tree. Again, there are too many of these here. It may cause inverse taper. So I might have to reduce this a bit. I think I will have to do that. So, you may say that I chickened out and didn't bite the bullet, but I think I was being a bit cautious. I can still create a very credible tree because if I just made that the leader, it doesn't look anything. If I just make this the leader, it doesn't look anything. But I leave these three and they form a nice big head. It will look like one of these mighty oak trees. And with that powerful trunk, it will be quite credible. So there you go. I think I've sorted that one out. So all these little tiny shoots keep coming off and I'll concentrate on. How old would you say this is for you? This I would say, I got these trees back in 1986, no thicker than that. But I will just show you how the trees callous like this. See, see they're callous. And you can help it by taking from the wood out. I know you can carve it out, but if you let it rot naturally, it's even better. I will show you in another tree how I let the trees rot from cutting it roughly with a chainsaw. So let's walk there and I'll you show you. You talk about loving large trees. I love large trees like this. And again, bearing in mind what I saw in Taiwan, this is nothing. So this is what I've been doing over the last two years with a chainsaw. We went down here. And I'm going to let the wood rot because I want a hollow trunk. And you can see where I cut at the top. You see this all natural rotting. All natural rotting. And when you let it rot naturally, you get a much nicer effect than simply carving it. So if you keep doing it, the tree will rot away and you will get a lovely hollow trunk. So we will do a little more carving with chainsaws like that and eventually create a completely hollow trunk with that tree. So that is the purpose of that tree. So this tree has been training here for the last, I would say five years. And all these are five year branches. And this was a tree about 12, 15 foot tall, cut down to this size. And that's the trunk. Again, when we went to Taiwan, they have pines with thicker trunks than this in even smaller pots. So what I'm doing is not crazy at all. This in Taiwan would be considered a normal sized bonsai. <laughs> so there you go. And I've got so many other projects on the go. So this is a maple that I'm going to develop. This is a mountain maple, a garden tree. So all these large maples that we have on the nursery are created from this sort of material. So this was cut right down and little side branches were grown. This one I did put a wire around it and hence it created that effect. You can see the wire still stuck in the tree. And that it is an experiment that didn't uh, quite go the way I wanted to. Because in Taiwan, this is how they make the junipers twist the trunk. 
You see, putting the wire on. So Peter Chan is not that silly, you know. I have been trying these techniques, but somehow they didn't seem to work so well. So I don't want to put the chainsaw there because it might snag the chain. But you can see how this tree is developing and coming along. And I can't wait till next spring. You see, I left the stub and that stub now. So this is just natural rotting. I just let it rot away. And you can see the superstructure already. So the bonsai is going to be this size. This maple will be this size. I'm not going to air layer anymore. This could make a lovely tree. <laughs> I'm not going to air layer that. I'm going to cut it down there, make this the leader, and we will start training this as a large size bonsai. So with that one, see that's another one. That's a red leaf one. That was a Nomura. So this is going to be another large a maple bonsai. So we look forward to uh, the design of the tree and that is how we plant the tree. So these are horse chestnuts grown in the broom style. You can see how they're evolving. So there's always a long-term plan for all these trees. So I hope you've learned a little bit from this project where we are trying to design in a logical way. You plan ahead, think of the shape, and you take decisions based on a logical approach to doing things. Before we close the program, look at these two junipers. Two years ago, we dug it out of the ground and I split it with that great big axe, that yellow and green axe, and we got two trees from it. It was split down the middle and these two trees are here, growing ever so well, and we will probably make them into what we call garden. I think this variety is called Grey Owl. Not a very desirable one for bonsai, but it's got some use. So who knows, this will end up as a decent bonsai. Yeah. So I hope you've enjoyed this project. <laughs>